Hello, everybody. Um, I hope you're doing well. Uh, today, we're going to be looking at graphing and writing linear inequalities. So last week, we were looking at equations. And this is the next step where we're looking at um, not just a line, but an entire set of solutions that's represented by an inequality. So let's start by reviewing graphing inequalities. Um, and so there are two pieces to graphing an inequality. And, and those two pieces for graphing an inequality are the boundary line and um, the shading. So if we're talking about graphing inequalities, if you're missing one or both the, or you know, one of those pieces, then you're just not quite done with your graph. Um, let me apologize. I should have said this to start with. Um, remember, this video is going to be a little bit longer because it's kind of covering a couple different concepts. Um, <clears throat> So please feel free to pause, rewind, um, complete it in um, diff two different settings, um, whatever you need to do to make this work best for you. Um, there's no rush. So back to graphing. Um, if we start by graphing the boundary line, what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to graph this as though it was it's just a line um, and we're going to ignore the inequality part of it. There are two kinds of boundary lines that we could be dealing with. We could be dealing with a solid boundary line um, if the inequality is inclusive. And so that is something like a less than or equal to or a greater than or equal to. Basically, if it has an equal sign, um, it's going to be a solid boundary line. Um, the other kind of boundary line we could have is a dotted boundary line. And that's if the inequality is exclusive. So basically, right, it's not equal to. It's either strictly less than or strictly greater than. Um, and the reason we're going to use a, a solid versus dotted boundary line has to do with these solutions. Um, if something is, is not equal to, right, if it's not equal to, then that means that those values are not exactly solutions. So that's why we have a dotted line. So that's step one. Step one is to graph the boundary line. Step two is to pick a point that's not on the line. And we're going to call this a test point. So we're going to pick a test point, and it's going to be something that's not on the line that we just graphed. And we're going to plug it back into the inequality. So we're going back to the inequality, and we're going to determine if that value, um, if that statement is true or false. So whether our statement is true or whether our statement is false. And uh, as we look at some examples, I think this will make a little bit more sense. The long story short is if the point is true if it is a solution oops true aka a solution then we're going to shade the same side on which that test point lies um, whereas if the point is false aka not a solution then we're going to shade the opposite side as where that test point is um, because the long story short is the shading um, that that involved that is involved with inequalities is that um, it any point on one side of the line if it is a solution every other point is a solution as well so let's look at some examples here um, to to really see what all of these pieces involve so example one says graph the inequality y is less than two x minus five. Um, so we've got this in a uh, slope intercept form. And so our first step here, right, is that boundary line. Now, since um, that is an exclusive inequality, right, there's no equal sign, this boundary line is going to be a dotted line. And we're going to just imagine that we're graphing um, the line y equals 2x minus 5. We're just going to ignore um, the, the inequality for now. We're going to use it to know that it's a dotted line, um, but otherwise we can just kind of briefly ignore the inequality. So uh, we've got a y-intercept of negative 5 or 0, negative 5, and I apologize, the numbering on this coordinate graph is a little bit goofy, so just make sure you're counting carefully. Um, so 0, negative 5, and then a slope of 2, right, means up 2 and right 1, um, and so you can plot as many points as you need to. Um, then once you grab your ruler, right, grab your ruler. Um, and then the thing to be mindful of is 
last week we were graphing lines, this week we're graphing inequalities, and we said that this was a dotted boundary line. So I'm going to make sure that as I do this, um, my boundary line is in fact dotted, right? It is not a solid boundary line. So we have our boundary line. We know um, that it's dotted. We've got it in the right spot. So step two is to pick a test point. Now, um, remember the test point is any point that's not on the line. And there are tons of points that are not on the line. Um, but there's one point that's generally a lot easier to work with than any, than any other point, and that's 0, 0. Um, and the reason I like to use 0, 0 is because when you're plugging in 0 and multiplying 0 or adding and subtracting 0, right, those operations are pretty easy to work with. So my test point is going to be 0, 0. And I'm going to go back to my original inequality. Y is less than 2x minus 5. And I'm going to replace x and y with 0. I guess I don't really need parentheses right there. So y is 0. And x is also 0. And basically, I'm verifying, is this resulting inequality going to be true or false? So um, this simplifies to 0, right? Is less than. Um, 2 times 0 is 0, um, and 0 minus 5 is negative 5. So this statement right here says 0 is less than negative 5, which is a false statement. 0 is not less than negative 5. 0 is bigger than negative 5. So that's going to tell us where to apply our shading. Um, so since 0, 0 is not a solution. We're going to shade the opposite side. So if I look at where 0, 0 is, 0, 0 is um, above my boundary line, um, which means that I'm going to shade the opposite side as 0, 0. Um, and uh, don't spend 10 years um, shading your graph, right? As long as it's obvious where your shading is supposed to be, um, then you're good to go. So again, we have our three steps here. Right? We have the boundary line. It's either solid or dotted. We have a test point. Um, my preference is 0, 0. Sometimes 0, 0 is not a good choice if it's actually on the boundary line. Um, and then once we have tested that test point, we know where to shade, and we just need to apply that shading. So we're going to do a couple more examples together. Um, these next few examples are going to involve some uh, questions for you to answer along the way. So again, feel free to pause the video, rewind, um, whatever it is that you need to do. Um, take a break if you need to. So example two, we've got the inequality y is greater than or equal to negative 2 thirds x plus 1. So again, my boundary line. Since I have an equal sign there, right, this is an inclusive inequality. Um, a shortcut that I remember learning in high school is that if you see a line in the inequality, you have a solid line. And that's pretty much the silliest thing I can think of, but it, it works for me. So this is going to be a solid boundary line. And again, we're, we're treating this as if it was simply the line y equals negative 2 thirds x plus 1. We get to temporarily ignore the inequality. So my y-intercept is 0, 1. Oops, I'm going to be consistent with my coloring there. Um, 0, 1. And then a slope of negative 2 thirds means that we're going down 2 and right 3. Down 2, right 3. And we can use as many points as we need to as long as we have at least 2. And then the ruler helps us be extra precise here. Um, uh, looks pretty good. I think so. And I want a solid boundary line. So this one's going to be a perfectly solid boundary line because it was an inclusive inequality. All right. So again, I could test any, any point that I need to. Right? There's infinitely many points that are not on um, this line, right? There's infinitely many points anywhere we need to. Um, but 0, 0 is just really easy to work with, and it's not on the line. So um, I'm, I'm going to use it again. So again, going back to my original inequality, y is greater than or equal to negative 2 
thirds x plus one. Um, and again, replacing x and y with zero. Now, if you're looking for an additional challenge, um, I, I encourage you to pause here and maybe use a different test point um, and see if you come up with the same conclusion as I do here with the test point of zero, zero. Just to prove to yourself that it, it does in fact work. Um, so simplifying here, uh, negative two thirds times zero. Luckily, that's pretty straightforward. That's just zero. And I get the inequality zero is greater than or equal to one. And again, this is a false statement. Um, now, if I uh, if this were true, I would graph the same side as zero zero, um, but it's not true. So I'm going to shade um, the opposite side. Oops. So the step three is to shade the opposite side as zero zero, um, which in this case is above the line. And again, I'm not going to spend 10 years making my shading perfect. I'm just going to make it, you know, painfully obvious here. All right. So example three um, is in standard form. And if you didn't have a chance to review the uh, Khan Academy standard form um, information, I, I encourage you to do that. Um, <coughs> I, it doesn't really matter what uh, form this is in, right? We're still going to have our three steps, graph our boundary line, and then use a test point to find our shading. Um, so this is going to be a dotted boundary line, right? Um, because there's no equal sign there. And I'm going to treat this as if it was just the equation 3x minus 4y is less than 12. Oh, excuse me, an e equation equals 12. So, um, Again, if you haven't reviewed your standard form um, graphing, I, I encourage you to, to go back and do that. Um, but the long story short is that we're going to rewrite this equation in slope intercept form. So I want to get y all by itself. I'm going to start by subtracting 3x from both sides. So that gives me negative 4y is equal to negative 3x plus 12. And notice I'm writing that so that I'm more prepared for slope intercept form. And again, to get y by itself, I'm going to divide everything by negative 4. So I do get y by itself. Um, and then remember, if we're dealing with uh, addition in the numerator of a fraction, we can always um, kind of treat these individually here. So I'm going to get negative 3x divided by negative 4 plus 12 divided by negative 4. And if I want to simplify that further, I'm going to get positive 3 fourths x minus 3 because uh, 12 divided by negative 4 is negative 3. All right, so now I know what my line is going to look like. Um, it's a dotted boundary line with a y-intercept at 0, negative 3. And then a slope of 3 fourths means I'm going to go up 3, right 4. Maybe just add a couple of points here and then use my ruler. Uh, do, do, do draw my dotted, remember, dotted boundary line. And there it is. Um, so again, in standard form, there's a little bit more um, manipulation involved just to, um, you know, make it easier to grab. But the overall step is the same. Talk about the boundary line, and then we're going to talk about our test point. And again, you know what point I love to use. It's not on the line here, it is zero, zero. And so I'm gonna go back to my original inequality um, to test zero, zero. So um, that will be three times zero minus four, oops, excuse me, times zero is less than 12. And again, here's why zero, zero is extra awesome. Um, three times zero is zero. Negative four times zero is zero. And so I get the statement zero is less than 12. Aha, that is a true statement, right? Zero cookies is less than 12 cookies. So since that is a true statement, um, we're going to shade the same side as zero, zero this time. 
right? Um, zero, zero is a solution, which means that every other point on the same side is a solution. So since zero, zero is right here above the line, um, all the rest of my solutions are also gonna be above the line. So um, that, that pretty much sums up graphing here, graphing linear inequalities. Um, if you'd like to, you can actually pause here and, uh, you know, take a break, go down to the practice assignment um, and, and try out your, your graphing with the inequalities first. And then you can always come back to these word problems. Um, but I just wanted to make sure that we got these yeah, kind of covered so that you have a little bit more of an idea of uh, what these inequalities are used for. So um, to look at these word problems here, it's really important that we're looking for a couple of um, key things. We're looking for what, what makes a variable um, and um, what quantities are related. So example one, Lisa sells earrings and necklaces. She sells the earrings for $30 and the necklaces for $40. To make a profit, she must sell at least $1,200 of jewelry a month. So our tasks are to define our variables, write an inequality, and then graph the solutions. Um, so when we say define the variables, right, if we're going to use x and y's to write inequalities, we need to know what they represent. So we've got two quantities here. We've got the number of earrings and we've got um, the number of necklaces. So I'm going to define X as the number of earrings or pairs of earrings, I guess. I'm not sure. And Y is going to be the number of necklaces. Um, so we've got a couple of quantities related here, right? It says $30 per pair of earrings and $40 um, per necklace. And then it says she must sell at least, and look at that word there, at least $1,200 of jewelry a month. So that means that whatever she sells, the dollars sold, and when we say at least, that's another way of saying greater than or equal to 1,200, right? If she sells $1,200 worth, she'll be good. Um, if she sells more than that, she'll probably be even better. So. Now we need to talk about what, how we represent the amount of money um, that she sold here. Here's where our variables come in handy. We know that it's $30 per pair of earrings and the, um, combined with $40 per necklace, right? Um, whatever combination of earrings and necklaces she sells, it's $30 per pair of earrings and $40 per necklace. And that combination must be greater than or equal to $1,200. So we've defined our variables, we've written an inequality, and um, now the, the task here is to graph that inequality. Um, and so again, I'm gonna refer back to kind of my three steps here, right? I'm just gonna circle this. Um, so first of all, we need to know about our boundary line. This is gonna be a solid boundary line. Oops. Um, because it's an inclusive inequality, it has an equal sign included there. So I'm going to make sure that that's a solid boundary line. Um, and then I do want to rewrite this a little bit um, so that I can actually graph it. So um, I'm going to think about it just as an equation. Oops. Oops, that, that 40 is just not super clear. Let me redo that. And again, I want to isolate y there. So I'm going to subtract 30x from both sides. And I'm going to get 40y is equal to negative 30x plus 1,200. And then when I divide whoops, both sides by 40, um, I'm going to get y all by itself. And then negative 30 divided by positive 40 is do, 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 negative three fourths x and then a positive 1200 divided by 40 um excuse me is a positive 30. so 
um, our line, our boundary line is going to look like, um, <coughs> excuse me, uh, negative 3 fourths x plus 30. Um, so I'm going to think about graphing here. Um, maybe I'll go up by 10, uh, 20, 30, 40. Do the same thing on the x-axis. And remember, since we defined our variables, we should also label our axes. So x was the number of earrings. And y was the number of um, necklaces. So my solid boundary line is going to have a y-intercept of 0, 30. And then a slope of negative 3 fourths means I could go you know, down 30, um, right 40, write all of those multipliers there, uh, and graph my solid boundary line. Oops, go away. Um, so, you know, we could think about kind of the, the, um, the logistics of this. If we want to have more than $1,200, um, you know, I wonder if we could just kind of intuitively decide where that shading would be. Um, but we definitely want to use a test point to just verify. So I'm going to test again the point zero, 00 because it's super friendly. So that would be 30 times 0 plus 40 times 0 is greater than or equal to 1,200. Then I've got lots of zeros there, right? 30 times 0 is 0 plus 40 times 0 is 0. So I've got the statement 0 is greater than or equal to 1,000. 200. Now, obviously, if we put this in terms of cookies, um, that is a false statement. So since 0, 0 is below that line, I'm going to be shading above the line. And so uh, making a graph here of all the possible options, um, what this means is I could select any point in this shaded area. So for instance, the point, um, oops, maybe that's hard to see. Oh, wait. The coordinate point 2030. What that means is that Lisa could sell 20 pairs of earrings and 30 necklaces and meet her goal. And any other point um, in the shaded region would accomplish the same thing. So uh, we got one more example to do together. Um, again, I, I think this is uh, just a, a good practice. And you know, if you need a break, please take a break. So. Justice decides to start a yard business for some extra money. He decides to charge $20 per lawn and $15 for every hour of raking leaves. If he wants to make more than $500, how many lawns or hours of raking will he have to do? So <clears throat> we need to um, you know, write an inequality and graph a solution. And of course, if we're going to write an inequality, we should also define some variables. Um, so we've got lawns and raking leaves. So again, I'm just going to use x and y. Um, so x can be the number of lawns that are mowed. And y could be the number of hours of raking leaves. This is probably more of an autumn business than a uh, springtime business. Uh, that's OK. So. Again, we're thinking about uh, what are the what are the quantities involved here? Well, if X is the number of lawns and he's charging twenty dollars per lawn, then that gives us twenty dollars per X, right? Um, plus fifteen dollars per hour of raking leaves. And now the question is, um, if he wants to make more than five hundred dollars, how do we how do we resolve that as an inequality? Well, more than um, means strictly greater than. Um, this means that if he makes exactly $500, he hasn't technically reached his goal. He wants this value to be greater than 500. Uh, so once again, we are um, dealing with uh, an inequality that we're that we're asked to graph here. So thinking about the boundary line, we've got an exclusive inequality. So this is, whoops, not going to be a solid boundary line. This is going to be a dotted boundary line. Um, 
And so if I'm thinking about uh, how am I going to graph this, um, again, I'll, I'll uh, go through this example. Oops. I'm just going to move over here and give myself a little bit more space. Um, if you are still struggling with graphing in standard form, I really, really encourage you to look at some outside resources as a reminder. So uh, subtracting 2x from both sides, 20x, excuse me, makes a little bit more sense there. So 15y is equal to negative 20x plus 500. And then divide both sides by 15. Um, and again, we're kind of dealing with these the numerator as kind of two individual pieces here. Um, so I could think of this as a negative 20 divided by 15x uh, plus 500 divided by 15. Um, and then uh, there's some simplifying we could do here. So I would say that we could simplify negative 20 fifteenths as negative four thirds, right? Since both of those values are divisible um, by five. And then uh, 500 divided by 15 is not a super stellar value. Um, for the sake of uh, time here, um, it's 33 and a third. Um, and so we would use this equation to graph our uh, boundary line, right? Our dotted boundary line. And then we would be looking for our test point. And again, um, zero, zero is an amazing little test point there. Um, and when we plug that in, when we test it, um, we do get a statement um, that will be false again. Oops, not 15, haha, -ha, 500. So we get the statement zero is greater than 500, which again is false. Um, so we would be shading here opposite of zero, zero, which would be above the boundary line. Um, and I will uh, leave you to look at the um, either Desmos or the content library to finish up um, or to check your work with this graph. Um, but again, please take your time with this. Um, you know, take breaks as you need to. Uh, use Desmos to check your work if you need to. And and please join um, join us for these Zoom office hours and get those questions answered because this is this is a new challenge here. And it's it's not going to be easy, um, but I'm I'm going to do my best to make sure that it's as smooth as possible. So um, take care of yourself, and I hope to uh, talk to you soon.